Hey everyone, it is great to be back talking to you a lot about Formula One on this channel whilst doing a dog walk. <laughs> it's been a while, hasn't it? Uh, but I'm pleased to say that I'm back with a series of videos brought to you by the Seedstream F1 app in which I'm going to be talking about the biggest stories from within that app, giving you my thoughts and opinions on each. This week, we're going to be talking about of course, what's going on in the background at Red Bull. We're going to talk about Mercedes and have they run out of excuses. Uh, Daniel Ricciardo and Carlos Sainz and the driver market as a whole is changing so rapidly. Are some drivers running out of time in their Formula 1 careers to impress? So it's all brought to you by Seedstream. Now, this is an app that I have an involvement with, full disclosure, but it's also become genuinely the first app I open every single morning when I pick up my phone. And the reason for that is that it's the one place I get all of my F1 news and content, but importantly, put into one specific place, all centered around a certain story. So when a story breaks, for example, you'll get all of the best written articles from the trusted sources you know and love. You'll get social posts, graphical displays, videos, all centered around that same story in one place. It's absolutely brilliant. And I hope you'll love it too. So please go and check it out, download it. The link will be in the description. And if you are an F1 fan like me, I'm pretty sure you won't be disappointed. Right, let's get going then. Red Bull Racing absolutely flying on track. Nobody can take anything away from what they're achieving at the moment. It's setting a new standard for Formula One teams. And having been involved in a team, having challenged for world titles and set our targets to be the very best in this sport in the past, Red Bull Racing are achieving the kind of things that every single team on the grid can only really dream of being able to achieve. It's amazing stuff and I have total respect for everything they're managing to do. Off track, however, the stories and the headlines seem even bigger than the impressive ones that Max Verstappen's creating behind the wheel. And when a lot of people are talking about even potentially not watching Formula One because they know who the winner's going to be, first of all, I have some, I take a exception to that anyway, because I think there's so much going on behind the winner, behind Max Verstappen, there's such close battles going on. I think there's plenty to be watching, but also the question that is posed who can stop Max Verstappen? Who can stop Red Bull? And the answer to that, I think, might just be themselves. Because the only thing I can see that might get in the way of this utter domination is the political power struggle that seems to be unfolding in the background. I mean, who knows if Christian Horner will still be at the team in six months or so? I have no idea. And the truth is, none of us do. A lot of the speculation around his personal situation and the situation he was investigated under is just that speculation. But the stuff that's going on around the power plays involved with him and Helmut Marko since the death of Dietrich Maschitz, well, that I find very interesting. They've created an environment there where, yes, people seem to be loving working there. Of course they are. They're winning everything. They are ticking off world championships and race wins, breaking records like there's no tomorrow. But I wonder what happens if that starts to fall apart? What happens if the on-track results start to fall away is everybody still going to be happy? Christian Horner's talked about nobody being bigger than the team, but in reality, and I know this from personal experience, when you get a superstar driver, and that's exactly what Max Verstappen is turning into right now, he's so big and so powerful, he could walk into any team in this sport and anybody would give him a drive. That's real power. And that means that, yes, of course, Christian's in charge. He's the CEO, he's the team principal, the leader of that organization. At the end of the day, a little bit like when you're making a Hollywood movie, if an A-list actor comes along and is the star of your show, yeah, of course, the director's in charge. But if that A-list actor really wants to do something different, really wants to make changes, who's going to be able to say no? Because the alternative is that driver walks away and goes to join somebody else. And with major seats opening up and down the grid, particularly at rivals Mercedes, that puts Red Bull Racing and Christian Horner in a particularly precarious position when it comes to Max. So is it really Max in charge? Is it really Christian in charge? And is that little environment that's been so successful over time just starting to show signs of unravelling? Only time will tell. But it could be the one thing that might stop them dominating for the foreseeable future when everyone else is struggling to catch up on track. Speaking of Mercedes, one of the other big stories in the app this week has been around Mercedes and their on-track performances not being up to scratch again. 
Both drivers talking about inherent problems with the car. The same kind of things we've been hearing about for the past two or three seasons. So have Red Bull, or sorry, have Mercedes run out of excuses now, particularly when it comes to their drivers. There is no doubt that if that car was dominant, if it was able to win races and challenge for world titles, I, in my mind, there's no doubt Lewis Hamilton would still be staying there next year and beyond. But he's not. He's seen a better opportunity at Ferrari. He's seen opportunity elsewhere and that's because results are everything when it comes to a driver in Formula One. Mercedes have got to butt their ideas up very very quickly and change some of the fundamentals with that car perhaps even with the organization and get back on track but the one thing I would say about Mercedes when we're talking about the driver market Mercedes have got a prime seat and it may not be championship contending this year but they're not far away and we know how good they are as an organization that will be a championship contending seat at some point I'm sure in the near future and that means the seat that Lewis vacates is going to be a very popular one so who fills it well, Carlos Sainz is one of the obvious choices. He's making uh, room at Ferrari for, uh, for Lewis to come in. Um, Kimi Antonelli, uh, a guy that's been talked about a lot by Toto Wolff. Uh, personally, I happen to think that Alex Albon might be a really good fit at Mercedes. But I think what's happened in recent weeks, and particularly what happened with Oli Behrman in the Ferrari uh, in Saudi Arabia at the weekend, together with what happened with Liam Lawson last year, is these young drivers who are inexperienced in Formula One getting their opportunity are really showing that they don't need years of experience to be capable in Formula One. The younger categories like F2 and F3 are preparing the drivers very, very well. And so the teams can sit up and take notice of the fact that these young drivers become a sudden option for them, whereas in the past they may not have been. They will cost the teams less. They are shapeable and moldable as a driver for the brand that they're representing. There's a lot of possibilities, a lot of promise in bringing a young driver into the team to learn from somebody more experienced. And George Russell is now an experienced driver at Mercedes. Kimi Antonelli, Oli Behrman, Liam Lawson, all these young kids can come in and deliver at a top team. They've shown it over and over again. Alex Albon, maybe not a youngster so much anymore, but also somebody I think is going massively in terms of confidence, doing an incredible job at Williams. Seems a very sensible, sensible kid that actually would fit the Mercedes mould really well and I think is a genuinely good option. Daniel Ricciardo, on the other hand, at the other end of his career, is getting a hurry up from Helmut Marco. He's getting the world starting to talk about him in terms of questioning him. Is he really what everyone thought he was? Is he the excitement we thought he was going to be when he came back into the sport? Because actually he's not beating his teammate consistently enough and that is the very first step to becoming a legendary driver in Formula One. You have to beat your teammate. He's not doing that enough and I think for exactly the same reasons I just talked about with young drivers poking their head up and saying look at me Daniel Ricciardo has got time running out on his Formula One career. It's a shame because I think he's a great guy a great character in the sport and has been a great driver but he seems to have made some poor decisions that have cost him dearly over the course of the last few years and I wonder if we might be seeing the last of him in 2024. Anyway I'd love to know your thoughts on all of those things Please drop me a comment uh, below in the comments section. Let me know what you think of the video. Also, let me know what you think of the app. If you go and check it out, Seedstream, it's an F1 app for all Formula One fans. You will not be disappointed. The link's in the description. Go and check it out. And while you're there, go and check out the Predictions League. It's a brilliant little bit of fun that we all have. It's interactive. It's a little community where we all predict the top five drivers and how they're going to finish in each race, each Grand Prix. Uh, personally, I've been doing averagely well in the first two races just two out of five points in the first race three out of five in the second one person got all five right but when you get all five right in this app you get a massive bonus 10 points so even if you've not been involved so far it's not too late to get involved now go check out the app download it it's totally free and have a go at predictions see you soon